Hi guys. So far we've looked at some of the bindings provided by Knockout, like the text binding and the if and for each control bindings. In this lesson we're going to see how we can create custom bindings in order to automatically update our view model when the text content of editable elements is changed. Knockout's binding handlers are stored in a property of the KO object called binding handlers. So to add a custom handler, we need to add it to this property. So we can do this at the bottom of our init method, but we need to do it before the apply bindings method is called. And our binding can be called editable content. And it's a simple object. When adding a custom binding, Knockout allows us to add two handlers to the object for the binding, an init and an update. The init handler will be invoked when the binding takes place, while the update is triggered every time the value of the observable changes. This binding will replace the text binding that we use to add the text from our view model to the header elements and figure captions. So we can go back to the HTML and remove the text bindings. Then let's add the update method, because this will add the text to the element when the value is updated. So in the HTML, instead of using text, we want to use editable content. So now let's add the update handler first. So this function will automatically be passed several things. The first is the element that the binding is attached to, and the second is the value from the corresponding view model property. And there are some additional arguments that may be received, but we don't need to make use of them here. So inside the method, we can add the view model property to the element. And because it's a view model property, we need to invoke it to get the actual value. So we don't know if the value we receive will be a primitive value like a string or an observable property. The header text will be received as an observable because these view model properties are observables. The fig caption text, however, will be primitive strings because even though they come from an observable array, they're just regular object members. So what we do is use knockouts unwrap observable method from the utilities object, which will give us the actual underlying value regardless of whether it's a native value or an observable. And we then just set the text of the element to this value. So if we run the page in the browser now, we should find that we still see the text added to the right elements, even though we've removed the text binding. Yeah, so the update method will be invoked for us whenever the value changes, including when the view model properties are originally set. This gives us the binding in one direction, from the view model to the elements in the UI. So now we can add the init method to our custom binding, and that will give us the binding in the opposite direction, from the HTML back to the view model. And again, this receives several arguments from Knockout automatically. So inside this, we want to add a blur handler for the elements that the binding is applied to so that the updated text can be saved back to the view model when editing finishes. This method is a little more complex than the update one. So first of all, we want to set a couple of variables. So first of all, we want to get the element that was edited and then we need to store the tag name. So we can cache the target jQuery element as we'll want to reference it a couple of times, and we can also store the tag name of the element so that we can handle the header text and fig captions separately. So now let's add a handler for the blur event.
We can use jQuery's on method to add the blur handler. Inside the handler, we first want to set some more variables. So we set an undefined variable called index. We also get the text of the element that was edited, and we store a reference to the current observable property from our view model. So next we need to handle the updating of the view model differently, depending on whether we're updating an observable or one of the objects in the observable array. So if the tag name does not equal span, then we know we're working with one of the elements in the header. So we can just set the value of the observable to the text that was edited. So this will be the new text value. However, if it's not, if the tag name is a span, sorry, then we know that we're dealing with one of the observables in the observable array. So now we want to set the value of the index variable that we set just a moment ago. So we can get that using jQuery's index method. So now we just need to update the correct photo inside the observable array. And we want to set the title property and we just set it to the text value. So now our custom bindings should be fully bidirectional. So as a test, we should be able to edit one of the photo titles, say by adding a Z to the start and then perform a sort and the photo will go to the end of the set as we would expect. So let's just try that out. So if we do a title sort, this becomes the second picture. So let's go back to default and we'll just change the title of this one. And now let's do a title sort once again. And this element now goes right to the end. Awesome. Awesome. So in this lesson, we saw how to implement a custom binding in order to automatically update our view model when the text value of an element changes through it having the content editable attribute. In the next lesson, we can look at a feature of Knockout called a computed observable. Thanks for watching.